Hello and welcome to Freud Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Gecko's latest release. This is the 135th scale Scimitar uh, Mark II or the TES H Operation Herrick in Afghanistan with a nice sort of, you know, uh, birdcage armor on the outside. So we can see down in here, lovely looking bit of box art as always. And then obviously we get a bit of a look we can see. We got a little bit of photo etch, which is nice, which I'm taking it is the sort of the armor on the side. But it, one of the things I'm interested in is knowing is it plastic as well as photo etch, or if you've only got the photo etch. Markings, obviously down in here, a couple of little options, a couple of clickies, all right. So your number for this one is 35MG0051. And then again, some shots of it actually built up. So in the box, First time I've been in here, as you can tell, we'll get out of the box, there we go. So it's a box within a box. So, in half, grey plastic, which is nice, all right. So multiple sprues, we've got clear parts down in here, we've got uh, a little stretcher and some little equipment, folded up stretcher as well. Uh, looks like we've got road wheels down in there, another set of road wheels. We've got the hull, again, it's not a massive tank this. Uh, we've got the turret, top turret in there as well. We've got the tracks, so it looks like it's a little bit like uh, Lincoln Lent tracks down in there. Uh, some more goodies each side. So you get plenty of plastic down in here, and one large one with the actual main upper hull system down on there. We do get, as we said before, the armour. Uh, no, this is just grill workings by the looks of it. So it looks like the armour is going to be moulded in plastic. All right, and then we get a very nice, looks like a correction sheet, maybe, or is it just a, a little bit extra? Special edition for Tiger Hobbies. Uh, so we know Gary over at Tiger Hobbies, this is obviously their one. So it's got a couple of extra bits down in there, which is very nice indeed. All right, so in the instructions, we are greeted by usual sort of call outs with these again so starting off on the lower uh, hull system putting all the actual uh, running gear in various things down in there and obviously we've got sprockets and idlers and returns all being fitted down in there as you might have imagined obviously the road wheels all being fitted down onto there as well and then this lincoln let track system which is actually not bad at all so good old position across the top down there and just adding the other ones in there so that's really nice indeed and then obviously we're working onto the upper hull so we've got the bottom parts being fitted down onto this one then the plating going onto the side we've got the stowage containers so forth and so on as you might imagine we've got the side armor being fitted on there as well and then all the various grills and bits and pieces being fitted onto the cooling louvers right the way over all right so then we've got the upper parts going down on there the four compartments things like that all being put on the rear sections plate stowage bins again all being fitted down there in the back and it is interspersed as you can see with lots of little bits of photo etch as well just to add that extra layer of detail uh, on there all right more Photo etch being fitted down in here, it's quite nice, nice, colourful, uh, easy to follow instructions, which is nice, right the way through. So we've got the exhaust shroud uh, being fitted down onto there as well, and all the other things like the fire bottles and those types of things. More photo etch being added down onto these ones right the way over it, as you can see. And then again, lots of the stowage items. We've got the mud guards being fitted down onto this one front and rear, and all the other stowage bins and obviously the lumps and bumps you might expect right the way over it. And then again, you've got the system here for the actual bar armor. These are, the, I assume, the rails for it all being fitted down onto the outside, as you can see. And some nice, clever little diagrams as well, showing you exactly how they should be and how they should look. Then obviously we've got the system them on here for the actual outer armor as well so again attaching all of those to the attachment points right the way through some nice little work there with the photo etch as well so that's quite nice with those ones on so we've got those attachment points all the way through and again plonking it together it's going to be a little bit complex and i imagine it's going to be quite fiddly to get all this in but in one way it is done by the looks of it in plastic uh, not that i've seen it yet uh, but that will be a lot easier than not bending it being in photo etch uh, so uh, from my point of view, that'd be a lot easier. Again, more stowage bins and doors, various things, and then up into the actual turret itself. So the turret will go in together. So we've got the actual vision slits and various things being done and the sights all done in there. Then we've actually got the cannon being fitted on the front. 
and then again hat top hatches all the periscopes being put in there as well and all the lumps and bumps and we got actually got the smoke uh, uh discharges and various ones put in there as well and then obviously all the items as you imagine so we got like bird cutters and all the various things done an incredibly nicely detailed model right the way through so this kit is definitely not lacking anywhere whatsoever so again looking very nice and again more of that armor being fitted down to the outside of it and then obviously we've got the various ones around the back end and then obviously putting down in here it's obviously you're not going to be gluing it down top and bottom and now you can see why i call it the tesco's trolley because it sort of reminds me of that when it is fully armored up like this as well so again very nice indeed okay markings for this one so we've got the prince of wales uh unit as well seventh armored uh down as well on this one and so these are basically Helmand Province ones uh, from around about October, uh, May to October uh, 2011. So a couple of options down in there. And then again, we've got November to April uh, 12. Uh, same thing with the uh, Queen's Dragoon Guards 20th Armoured. Again, so some very nice ones in there. So great job on that one. Really nice, clear instructions. Again, we've got this other one here. for some of the other markings as well. So we've got some slightly different options down in this one. And again, this looks like it's for the limited edition version that uh, Tiger Hobbies, which is obviously this one is from anyway. So as you can see, some nice different options down in there. Right, where are we gonna start? Let's start with the photo etch and the bits and pieces. Okay, so in the little baggie we have very thin photo etch. That feels quite thin, bearing in mind it's plastic all over it, and we've got the decals. So the actual, as you can see, photo etch, really very nice indeed. As I say, there's a lot of detail this is going to add right the way over it, through the strappings uh, and all the little parts on there. It's really going to make it pop and make it very nice in scale, down to the actual mug guards down in here. But these grills and things are beautifully done, very finely done. You can probably see the... Uh, details you can look right through these grills at the top very very nicely done say so it is covered in protective film as well so that's nice keep it nice and flat decals again looking really nice pretty much exactly what we'd expect so good job with both of them so let's start with the biggest one down in here i've got my knife <coughs> First up, big old sprue. Again, you know, let's face it, Gecko do produce some really, really nice kits. So you don't see so much as sort of sort of sink marks and you know flash and all things like that. They've pretty much got it down packed now. So again, looking around on these, very, very nicely done. Good details, nice and crisp and sharp. There's that hole. Obviously, there's a lot going to be bolted onto it, but it's got nice surface detail anyway. You've got the bolts are really pronounced, they're very sharp and crisply molded. Very nice indeed, as you can see. No problems with that at all. And so, yeah, where do you start? There's just bags everywhere, so we'll just grab bags at random, I think, and work our way through. So this is a nice one. This is what I wanted to see, and this is the armour. So, again, we've got a couple of little ones there. We've got this big sheet here, and again, it looks pretty much in scale. It's all cleanly moulded as well. So when we're looking at it, I'm looking to see, you know, making sure these little details down in here, like the little pulse, they are nicely moulded and done. We've got no flash in between. We've got no sort of mismoulds or anything funny going on with these. It generally is just really nice and crisply done. And again, I think it's actually a really nice scale. So I know a lot of people think, well, the photo etch is probably a little bit closer to scale, but for workability and things like that, I prefer this way. Definitely, it's a lot easier. So yeah, definitely gets the thumbs up there. The armor looks good. Okay, so down in here, we've got one of the ends. And again, you can see this crispness to the details to the top of the hatches. This is the driver's hatch, I do believe. And we've got the rear as well. So that's very nice. But all the details are good, sharp, crisp, raised and recessed details, as you'd imagine. Ejector pins are all flush. Or if not, they've just got a couple of little tabs on like here just to pop off. So again, nicely done with those. And then again, we've got this one down in here. Beautifully done. Really nice. Got some of the gun area at the top. Some of the other parts, again, nice, good, clean, crisp, be molded. And then down here, there we go, coming through the top. 
you've got a little bit more of the, the armor bits just down in here, as you can see. So again, really very nice. This is the underside and on the top, you can see really good, clean, sharp details all the way through. It's a lovely kit. And then again, so lots of plastic in here, lots of detail. And again, I know sometimes I talk about kits being overcomplicated and things like that, but with armor, you sort of need all the lumps and bumps and things going onto it. There's so many small little bits now for the protective armor on, especially like this one with the actual cage armor on the outside. But, uh, you know, to keep it in scale, it needs to be sort of molded separately to make it all work. And that looks really, really nice indeed. And just pop down in here. So down in here we've got the lower hull, some more of the smaller bits up here to start with. I think we'll have a look at the turret as you can see. Looking very nice indeed. Good, nice, sharply crisp. And again, the attachment points really, really small. Like these little guys down here are tiny. And again, it is beautifully done. As I say, there's no even deburring on the spruce. You know, normally you get a little bit of join, like marks and that. I'm just feeling it. There's very, very little on these kits. Very nicely done. Gecko really do do a good job. Right the way through to the detail inside the hatches. Again, really nice on the blind side. And then, oh, this is a little bit weirdly done with the moulding and everything. Let me just sort of straighten that out. But again, you can see the detail down in this lower hull. Obviously, you've got so many attachment points going on to this one with everything going in there. But again, you can see the bolting looks really good. Very, very sharp uh, and nicely done. And again, these other parts, I think these are for the actual uh, uh, mudguard areas and fenders, things like that. Very nice, We've got the hosing, various parts. So again, really good. Uh, then we got some wheels, which weirdly is in a zip bag, which I'm not gonna complain about. So I imagine this is a mirror. Yep, so we really need to look at one. And you can see we've got the idler and the sprocket down in there as well. So again, very nicely done. Nice and sharp and crisp, which is what we like. Yeah, these are all in zip bags, these last few, which is uh, handy. Um, and then we've got, again, this will be a, a, I assume, a bit of a mishmash of different ones in here. So we just get one out of each. So we've got the road wheels. Again, nice details with the bolts, the various parts. Very nice indeed. And again, there's the other part down in here with those arms for the suspension. Very nice. Very good. So we've also got multiples of those, we've got four of those. Again, and then we've got the tracks, which obviously link and length. And again, we've got another mirrored pair just left and right. So it gives you a bit of an idea. And you can see it's got the natural sag. I assume this is the top. So it's got the sag running already molded in for you and then the rest of it you'll go through. But again, they look really nice. The sprue attachment points are very, very fine, as you can see, you know, to the point where it's barely hanging on, I would have thought with these up here, but it's done the job. So really very nice with there. And again, this bit here, I assume is for the limited edition because you get the little stretcher. So we get a folded up stretcher and one ready to go as well. So I don't know if this is just the special edition bit. I assume it is. The tiger gets the extra sprue so i don't think you'll find that on any of the sort of worldwide ones so that's quite nice and then last up obviously we've got the clear parts which to be honest is what it is they're always nice and flat with armor so we don't have to worry but we obviously we've got the periscopes and the sights gun sights and the sighting system for the commander again beautifully done all the way through I don't normally get excited about armor, but actually, and I don't know why, I probably need a good slap, but I would build this. It's got some really, really nice details into it. One is it's quite small. It's quite a cute, I know the armor guys are helped me for saying cute, but it's a cute tank. It's quite small. Uh, you know, let's face it, the scimitar isn't a big tank by any means, but it just beefs it up with all this stuff onto it and having the cage arm around it and all the rest of it and all of that detail, all the beautiful photo etch as well, which to me is one of the highlights from the kit. That's beautifully done, amazingly done, very, very tiny little grill holes, but it'll really make it pop. But as you can see, I think if you used to do this as a little bit of a diorama or perhaps as a little diorette even on its own, things like that, it would have real presence and you could go to town with the weathering. And I know a lot of people say, oh, it's boring, it's just in sand. 
you can do a lot with sand to make it look very, very nice. But I think this just adds that next level. Having this bit with the birdcage armor sort of all the way around it, it just makes the tank look a little bit more beefy uh, and a little bit more menacing and definitely is a bit of a favorite of mine. I've sort of come to love this one. I've had it in my stash here for a while to do a review on it. And uh, now I've seen it, I'm all over it. I think it's a great kit. Anyway, that's the Gecko 135th scale Scimitar Mark II TES H kit. Thank <laughs> you.